One of my most popular videos is called The Myth of the Prudish Monogamy-Oriented Good Girl. One of the reasons why a lot of guys are scared to say sexually provocative things to women because they're scared they're going to upset a good girl's sexual sensibilities. Newsflash. No fucking good girls in today's society. There might be, in the way I say, there might be 1%, 2%, maybe being generous, 3 4% of women who are saving themselves for their husband for marriage. But today, women are fucking at the age of 11, 12, 13 years old. There's women, by the time they're 25, they've been fucking for 10 years. I know that guy's sitting there right now. Like, yeah, this guy does keep it real. Shit. <laughs> it's a myth, man. Here, here's the reason I call it a myth, and there's a book I promote from time to time by a guy named Daniel Burton. It's called What Do Women Want? Anybody familiar with that book? If you're familiar with that book, you know that he, he, he criticizes us, his own gender, as I tend to, and I have a lot of haters and critics because of it. But essentially what he says is that men, there's a lot of things that men believe about women because they want to believe it about women. Let me repeat that. Men believe certain things about women because they want to believe those things about women because it makes them sleep better at night. And one of those things is, well, women are born with more monogamous tendencies than men are. That's bullshit. Women like to fuck just like we do. You better believe that shit. They love to fuck. You know the, the female sex toy industry is a billion dollar industry? You think these women are using that shit in the kitchen? <laughs> their pussies get wet, they play with their pussies. Oh wait, what did I do wrong? What happened? Oh, okay. Fives. Okay, I said I divide them into five categories. Okay, I'm going too fast. What I call an said again, a five, that is a genuine good girl. That's a woman who will only engage in sexual relations with a man who is her husband or at bare minimum, her fiance. So if you find a five, then you have, if you're in search of that, you know, proverbial good girl, if you find a five, you found her. It, it's not so much, again, that woman is born with this biological impulse to be monogamous, but her social programming of, of a concept I talk about all the time, I heard even one or two other speakers talk about, nicknamed cultural conditioning, social brainwashing. Her social programming is so strong that she's willing to control her sexual desires and urges and save herself for her husband. A four, that's a woman who prefers to only engage in sexual relations with a man who is their husband, their fiance, or their long-term boyfriend, but at least occasionally, they're gonna engage in one or more episodes of non-monogamous casual sex. A three, that's a woman who will publicly present herself to to men as if they're a five or at least a four, but privately they get down, which is what I refer to as your wholesome pretenders and erotic hypocrites. See, a wholesome pretender, that's a woman that if you propose casual sex to her, she's going to always initially say, no, I'm not that kind of girl. No, I, I only have sex with my boyfriend. Oh, really? Is that right? So you're telling me you don't? You don't want to feel my dick in your pussy? Oh, you're bad. <laughs> you're nasty. Then you end up fucking. A two is a woman who really likes to get down behind closed doors. But again, publicly, she's going to present herself as a four. You know, again, a good girl or if not present herself as a good girl, this is my archetype of the erotic hypocrite. Erotic hypocrite is similar to a wholesome pretender, but she, in addition to wanting to protect her good girl image, 
She thinks men should whine and dine her for the pussy. And one, that's just a woman who's openly freaky. <laughs> social programming. I already talked about that. Now, I talked about social programming. Organized religion is one of the factions of society. I talk about this in my book, The Beta Male Revolution, that promotes the idea of monogamy, for better or for worse. So does media and entertainment. So does certain aspects of the public school system. And many of your parents, your siblings, other family members, and elders in the community, or your culture. Manipulative head games. I talked about a lot of that last year, so I don't want to. Well, I'll talk about it in relation to, here's my next book. Possibility of sex. Now, guys in the seduction community, PUA community, They want to always say, Alan, so what's the, what's the great benefit of being direct? You're like, you know, I'm an indirect guy. And I think indirect is okay. Like, what's, what's so wrong with being indirect? Well, number one, if you want to meet a woman and talk about the weather for 10 minutes and talk about, you know, you were played football in high school for 20 minutes and all that other bullshit that has nothing to do with getting a woman's pussy wet, go right in. But here's the deal. One of my archetypes is the woman called the manipulative time waster. And it's funny, of my five archetypes, a lot of other PUAs and dating coaches, they do not like to acknowledge the existence of manipulative time wasters. What is a manipulative time waster? I already emphasize this, but I'm going to emphasize this again. Friendly, flattering, flirtatious, and entertaining conversation with women means jack. Okay? You guys get that? If a woman's laughing at all your jokes, that doesn't mean she's going to suck your dick at the end of the night. It just means she enjoys being entertained by you. She listens to all your stories that sound interesting, and she's smiling, and you thinking, God, I'm in there. No. Women love men's non-sexual companionship much more, honestly, than we do theirs. Men could go weeks, months, even years without a woman's non-physical, non-sexual companionship. <laughs> Guys laugh like, that's like an understatement. <laughs> we can't. We, we, I, I don't, I, I've never had a male friend that said, Damn, man, it's been so long since I spent time with a woman platonically, man. It's driving me crazy, dude. I can't take it. I need to be around some women platonically. It's just not in our DNA makeup. But you better believe women love your company in a non-physical, non-sexual manner to the point where, going back to this, Title, The Possibility of Sex. How do they sell you on the idea of spending time with them? Hmm? There you go. See, that's the difference between them and just straight up rejectors. Rejectors are women. See, a lot of guys look at rejectors as the enemy, but those women, you should appreciate those women who straightforwardly reject you because they're letting you know, basically, you're never getting this pussy. Don't even try. Don't waste your time, exactly. Manipulative time wasting, they always want you to think you that close to getting a pussy. <laughs> well, if you go with me and my girlfriends to these bowling events for the next five weeks, I don't know. Anything can happen. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anything can happen. I mean, like, I've been like going to bowling with you for the last eight weeks. I that ninth week might be your lucky week. <laughs> Who knows? They love to use that vague, ambiguous language like, you never know. Possibly. Maybe. There's four things that manipulative time wasters want from men. 